Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Learner Radiology. I'm Brent Weinberg. Today, we're going to have the seventh and final installation of the Emergent Brain Tumor Imaging Series. We're going to talk about complications of brain tumors. We're going to go over a little bit of a summary of the things we've seen in the other videos. If you haven't checked out those videos, be sure to go back and check out the whole playlist. Check out the other things on LearnerRadiology.com about brain tumors. There's a lot you can find there. Today, however, we've talked about all the other things. We've talked about kind of the role of imaging in the emergent brain tumor setting. We talked about some of the common tumors and mimics, but today we're going to talk about complications that you should be on the lookout for, particularly in patients who come in with known brain tumors. Uh, many of the things you need to worry about are the common things you're worrying about in all patients getting a CT. So infarct, herniation, or significant mass effect, hemorrhage, you can see tumor progression and radiation necrosis sometimes, but many times that's going to fall on MRI to help differentiate those. Hydrocephalus, particularly acutely worsening hydrocephalus, is something that you have to be aware of and that you have to report uh, on these patients. Uh, here's a case example. This is a 55-year-old man with aphasia. He's got a glioblastoma resection, so he had it recently. Uh, so here, uh, this is his pre-op imaging. So you see, uh, similar to some of the other cases we've seen, low-density lesion with some uh, peripheral hyper density in the left temporal lobe, again on the coronal CT. Uh, so now there's a pre-op MRI, got some, maybe some necrotic blood product areas, some enhancements. So he's got, uh, got this tumor in his temporal lobe there. Uh, here now we see the post-op imaging. So we have pre-T1, post-T1. So he's got now a resection cavity there, pretty smooth and clean looking resection cavity. But on his MRI, what you see is on, this is now diffusion. And you've got this wedge shaped periphery of abnormal diffusion posterior to the cavity there. That's an area of infarct posterior to the, to the resection there. So this patient had an infarct in the postoperative setting. And uh, that's probably what's contributing to his worsening symptoms. Uh, here you can see now if you wait until three weeks, if you do post-contrast enhancement, now the patient has gyroform enhancement out here, much like you would see in an infarct, but it looks different from the tumor and it's important like to not call this tumor progression. These are just areas of enhancement and gyroform enhancement where there was previously an infarct. So this is kind of the evolution of a post-procedural infarct and uh, that's a common complication that you can have after a resection. Uh, this post-resection infarcts, like I said, uh, when you see just a small rim, that's very common in the post-op setting. We call that, we tend to call that devitalized tissue. We don't wanna really throw that under the bus of saying it's like a complete infarct, but when you see wedge-shaped and territorial defects, uh, you should describe those as infarcts, and those are from interruption of the proximal vascular supply, such as in this case. Another case we have here is a 67-year-old man. He's got the worst left-sided deficit and falls two weeks into his radiation therapy. So he's had a, a glioblastoma and he's getting radiation. Here's his immediate post-biopsy imaging. Uh, looks not too bad, like not, not a whole lot going on. And uh, let's see if I can show you this uh, movie here. Uh, when he gets three weeks into his radiation, however, it's a lot worse, right? Like you see much more swelling of this side. You can even see it on these two images here. If we come down, there's a lot more edema in that hemisphere, maybe some areas of hemorrhage. Let's see if I can find about the same level. Some areas of hemorrhage, some uh, increasing edema, worsening mass effect on the lateral ventricle there. You can definitely see the lateral ventricle doesn't look, uh, doesn't look as good. It's displaced to the other side. Uh, so definitely this patient's getting worse after radiation. Uh, so when you talk about the CT, you wanna talk about that worsening edema, worsening mass effect with small areas of hemorrhage, and that's likely contributing to his symptoms. Uh, the differential for this really is that he has acute radiation necrosis or rapidly worsening tumor. You can't tell the difference on CT, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. When you make your CT impression though, you wanna say there's significantly worsening edema and mass effect in the known tumor bed, either rapid tumor worsening or radiation necrosis. Now they're gonna go on to get an MRI if they choose to, but uh, at least they should be aware of these acute findings. That worsening mass effect and hemorrhage though are key. Here you see on the post-contrast imaging, uh, this patient's immediate post-biopsy imaging, you see some nodular enhancement there. Three weeks into radiation, it's uh, substantially worse, a lot more mass effect, a lot more enhancement, some areas of, of necrosis there. 
Uh, so this patient was transferred into hospice. Uh, this was described as rapid tumor worsening. These brain tumors are extremely aggressive. They can increase in size uh, pretty rapidly. MRI is really that key to diagnosis, uh, but it really can be hard even on the MRI. But you do want to describe the mass effect, the hemorrhage, the worsening of those things, uh, because that can really help uh, guide their management. Acute radiation necrosis, though, and rapid tumor worsening have a pretty overlapping appearance, so you, you often won't be able to tell the difference, particularly in the early phase. All right, for this case, we're featuring a 37-year-old man with recent surgery for anaplastic astrocytoma. Uh, he has a new seizure, ultimate status, and fever. On his images, you see his immediate post-op imaging from six weeks ago. He had these, uh, he had some post-op pneumocephalus. He had uh, radiopaque radiotherapy implants within the resection bed, uh, but otherwise kind of looks expected for post-op. On the follow-up study now, so it's been six weeks, you now see development of these fluid collections here. Uh, you see filling in of that cavity with fluid, which is kind of expected. But the other thing you see is the ventricles are more prominent here. Uh, so it looks like maybe he's getting a little bit of hydrocephalus. Here, uh, again, you see those collections a little bit more prominent over the convexities here. Maybe a little bit more prominence of the ventricles. Uh, this person has recent post-op changes, though, with these new subdurals. They have new mild hydrocephalus. These are the things you need to tell them about in your CT report. Uh, you need to talk about whether the possibility of infection is present and whether this person uh, has just acute hydrocephalus after surgery. Uh, so we want to talk about the development of those new post-op uh, fluid collections and the new mild hydrocephalus. Uh, in this case, uh, this is a post-operative infection. Uh, they uh, had to go in and uh, evacuate those, those fluid collections. Uh, they put in a shunt to divert those. Uh, when they wash out that wound, though, they, uh, they did grow uh, staphylococcus. Uh, so this was an area of infection. And it, this just tells you that infection can be quite subtle. Those fluid collections, they aren't that crazy for a post-op patient. The hydrocephalus is really pretty subtle. Uh, but the patient, because they were so symptomatic, they had a high suspicion. And so you should also have a high suspicion for post-operative infection in these patients. Uh, new fluid collections or hydrocephalus can be a sign of hemorrhage or infection. So you want to pay, pay attention to them. You don't want to blow them off too easily. Here we've seen some complications that you can get after brain tumors, uh, particularly after their treatment. You can get infarcts, you can get more mass effect and herniation, you can get hemorrhage, you can get rapid tumor progression or radiation necrosis, and you can get hydrocephalus or infection. Uh, so these are all things that you should think about when you're evaluating these post uh, brain tumor patients on CT. When you do see these things, think about talking to your surgeons, uh, talk to the oncologist if necessary, let them know that you're concerned about these things. A lot of times the clinical scenario will help guide their management, so you're not necessarily making a treatment decision for them, but do let them know that some urgent new treatment might be needed. So in this lecture, we've seen a lot of different things about brain tumors. We kind of learned about the role of imaging when you might do it. We've seen the imaging presentation of a bunch of the common tumors, astrocytomas, oligodendrogliomas, METs, uh, lymphoma, some of these other things. We've also seen some non-tumor mimics like infection and demyelinating disease. And in this lecture, we covered some of the important complications, infection, hydrocephalus, all of those things. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning into this lecture about brain tumors in the emergent setting. I hope you learned a little bit about how to have a general approach to brain tumors, particularly the role of using CT to screen for masses and complications. In most of these cases, you can remember, you don't have to name a tumor type, but hopefully you can help come up with a potential grade. So you want to be able to say, is this a high grade tumor that we're looking at, or is this a low grade tumor? Now, there are a few situations where you can change patient management. That's when you have suspected infection, possible demyelinating disease, or metastatic disease. These can significantly change the surgical management. So if you're able to give that in advance, that can really help your surgeons. And always be on the lookout for complications of brain tumors. That includes hemorrhage, hydrocephalus, herniation, and other complications. This can really help uh, in the urgent management of these brain tumor patients. With that, Everyone, thanks for your attention and thanks for tuning in to LearnNeuroRadiology.com. If you haven't seen some of the other videos on the site, be sure to check them out. Hit the like button down below and subscribe so you get notifications about new videos. And hopefully we'll have more great new content coming up in the upcoming months. Thanks a lot for all your support and uh, we'll see you next time.